Welcome, Ben Mama. Hello, everybody. Q and A, Kevin Ed here, and uh, I'm back with another hardware review for you. And uh, as you can see today, it's the ZX Spectrum Plus Two complete 128k computer outfit and um, this was uh, another marketplace pickup I've been getting some really good ones recently I've got a few more uh, hardware reviews actually queued up um, of things that I've picked up and I think you're going to be um, pretty jealous and pretty surprised when you see what these things are that I, that I managed to grab because uh, they are seriously good um, this is the first of them and I was rather happy with this one for several reasons firstly because it's all boxed and uh, obviously boxed ones are hard to find harder to find uh, secondly because I don't have a grey plus two in my collection uh, thirdly because it came with an absolute ton of games I mean I've got a massive big box uh, full of games that came with it as well all boxed in good condition Whoever had it um, certainly um, took care of the uh, took care of the stuff, you know, to keep the boxes and stuff. Well, a lot of people didn't, although the box is a bit battered, as you can see, um, but really not too bad. Uh, the ends are a bit ripped, um, and uh, the last reason is because um, it's got a kind of a, a quite a personal connection to me as well because. I wanted a Spectrum for a long time. Uh, I finally got my wish when I got one for Christmas. On the condition that um, I shared it with my brother and sister that it would be a family computer and we would use it for schoolwork and stuff like that I'm sure you've heard that story before and I'm sure there are many people who can relate to that story as well over over that and um, I already knew quite a few people with spectrums um, that I that I went around their houses and played on and one friend in particular who's actually my, my probably my best friend at the time um, called Neil had this exact pack, this ZX Spectrum Plus 2 pack, with this um, um, from Dixon. So he had this exact pack, um, exact same games, all of that. So uh, I, I already knew about you know the, the existence of this pack kind of thing. And uh, I really, really wanted one uh, the same. Because all my other friends up until that point had had 48Ks. Um, well, no, I did actually have one friend um who had the toast rack um it wasn't a really good friend so i went around his house a couple of times but not that often but he had the toast rack which is pretty cool that's the first time i'd seen a 128k spectrum but from what i remember he didn't really have much software that took advantage of the 128k he didn't have a lot of games whereas my friend neil used to buy just buy games constantly so he had loads of games so it's the first time i'd seen obviously the fact that games had music and speech and uh, didn't have the multi loads and all the other advantages that came with 128k. So I specifically asked um, my dad uh, if he could get us um, the Plus 2, Spectrum Plus 2. And he actually got it from Toys R Us, not Dixon's. And um, the one that he actually ended up getting, we were expecting a grey Plus 2. And we actually got a black Plus 2A and I've never seen the black one before. So that was totally new on me and even didn't see much about it in the magazines. I'd already started buying some Spectrum magazines before I got the computer. And um, yeah, I didn't even know about the existence of the grey one, uh, so the, the black one. So I was a bit like, oh, well, this is a bit different. Um, but it came with the exact same six games there. I didn't get these two on the end. I didn't get the um, Ian Botham's Test Match and Superfile, um, which are with this one. I didn't get that and I didn't get the other one, which is uh, a strange little double cassette i think these were exclusive to the dixon's bundle um so yeah what's that um odd job eddie and witch fiend so i didn't get those ones in mine um i just got the the six that a lot of people are familiar with because they were the games that were bundled with the plus two for a long long time into into the plus two a now um so the plus two was the very very first model uh that was produced and sold by amstrad it was the first amstrad spectrum and uh you know that's pretty clear to see because it, it bears quite a remarkable resemblance to the amstrad cpc 
which I'll stick up in the um, right hand corner just to familiarize yourself so you can see the two side by side as well I do actually have a CPC uh, which I've reviewed on my channel previously uh, as well but uh, that's in the garage and it's bloody huge so I'm not even sure it's fitting the same um, video frame with the plus two it's actually a bit bigger than this so the main feature that was carried over um, of course really stands out is the fact it has the built-in cassette recorder which was totally totally new to, um, to Spectrum's having that, that built-in data recorder as they called it. The other um, quite exciting feature about the Amstrad Plus 2's the Amstrad Spectrum's even was that it came with a proper keyboard. It's not the best keyboard it's a bit cheap you can probably hear that actually from me pressing it. They're very kind of flimsy plastic keys um, yeah, it's not going to match, you know, the, the keyboard of the Commodore 64 or, you know, an Apple II or something. But, uh, yeah, it's a decent enough keyboard. Um, it worked. It was certainly a hell of a lot better than the uh, the keyboards that came on the Spectrum Plus model. Um, I'll, again, I'll stick that up in the, the top right-hand corner so you can familiarise yourself with that keyboard. And, of course, the rubber key Spectrum, the original one, um, with the dead flesh keyboard which a lot of people hated and i've actually got one here so we can um have a look not just at the difference with the keyboard obviously having a proper keyboard as compared to the old dead flesh rubber keys which were just terrible to type on but also you can see the size difference i mean even if you put it there you can see that the keyboard itself on the plus two is bigger than the spectrum the um 48k and height wise it's, it's it's taller as well i mean if i stand this up now which i'll do there it's probably better anyway to it standing up for the moment and then i put this in there you go there's another good size comparison between the two and uh, actually just for uh shits and giggles as they say i've got a plus three here as well i've reviewed the plus three previously on my channel which is the disc based spectrum so again, I'll link that in the top right hand corner actually if you want to watch my video on the plus three then um, and go ahead because uh, it, that was the, the last spectrum and undoubtedly probably in many ways the best spectrum in terms of what it could do. And here we go. So there's a spectrum plus three. So you can see uh, the plus three is a bit bigger. Um, it has a bit more on each end which is a strange thing. It has a bigger bigger on that side which I'm sure you can see and of and that but then the disk drive obviously doesn't take up as much space as the data recorder but it is actually a little bit longer probably about a centimeter longer um, height wise exactly the same though and uh, I'll go into the differences in a little while between the plus three the plus obviously apart from the disk drive and the plus two and the plus two a because the plus two a was basically a plus three with a tape deck instead of a disk drive same color and uh, most of the same capabilities um, well pretty much all the same capabilities actually because the ROM and actually all of that was exactly the same and uh, those of you eagle eye will spot I've got a a, um, a little flash device plugged into the back of my plus three because that's the spectrum I use all the time that's my my spectrum of choice because I've also got a lot of software um, on disc and some stuff that I made myself which is on disc as well So yes, as I said, let's let's go through those differences because uh, I think they are all worth noting. So first of all, the differences between the 48K and the um, the 128K Spectrums. Now the 128K Spectrums all have the same capabilities, whether it's a 128K Plus, uh, Plus 3 or a Plus 2 on a basic hardware level. There are differences in the ROM and stuff before anyone jumps in and says that but the, the basic hardware capabilities were the same and 
likewise is obviously with the 48k models and 16k model before it so most notably um i think uh, is the memory so obviously 48k 1 to 8k uh big big difference and uh, made a big big difference with games because it meant the games could be larger there was a later on there was a lot of um 1 to 8k only software produced for the spectrum because uh, they needed the they needed the larger size uh, during the transition period where both models were available what you started to find was there was a lot of uh, 48k games that multi-load so for those who don't know what that means is you had to load each level one by one and on the uh, plus twos it would load the entire game or 128k models even it would load the entire game in one go so the game would you know take maybe half an hour to load but you never have to load it again which is always a preference for me to not have to load each level by level by level uh, a good example of that would be chase hq um, by ocean robocop by ocean multi-load on the the 48k not on the 1 to 8k the second biggest difference between the 48k 1 to 8k was that the 1 to 8k had a proper sound chip which um if you're not familiar with the spectrum might sound a bit strange but yes the 48k didn't really have a sound chip what it did have was a little internal speaker which um, most people know affectionately as the beeper and um, you could make, you make, make it kind of vibrate at different sounds to give sound effects and stuff like that and you had a little speaker um, on the back which is there in the corner um, to output that sound um, so it was really quiet really awful um, it was a miracle that anyone really tried to get music out of it, although some people actually did, which is quite surprising, um, because it really was pretty awful. But um, a few, notably Tim Follin and Ben Dalgleish, actually managed to get some pretty amazing tunes out of the beeper um, later on. Uh, some things that it was not really ever meant to do. It was just very, very clever programming. Uh, so you had a an what they call um, an AY sound chip in the uh, 128K machines which was a Texas Instruments clone of the Yamaha um, YM chip. So, yeah, it was basically the same. So it was a very similar sound chip to the one that was found in the um, Atari ST, actually. Um, similar, though, the ST has the Yamaha version. And lots of other systems had it. I think the Texas Instruments computers had that sound chip. The, I think, ColecoVision and Television had something pretty similar. Um... There was loads and loads and loads of systems that had that. The Amstrad CPC um, all had variations of that of that sound chip. So actually, it was good when they were making music because that same music could then be used on the Spectrum, on the Amstrad, and on the Atari ST. They could basically use the same tune, which was great. It was a chip that everybody already knew how to use, and it was probably very cheap as well, which is probably one reason why it was chosen for the 128K Spectrums. So there you go, there, there, there was some of the main differences. Uh, a lesser known difference is that, uh, it, well, less in terms of hardware, more in terms of the actual system ROM, was that whereas the 48K machines booted straight into BASIC, uh, and then you had sort of some, basically a command line to do everything, the 128K Spectrums booted into a menu where you could use the cursor keys, um, which 48Ks don't even have cursor keys, 128Ks do. Uh, you could use those cursor keys to um, scroll through the menu and choose options. As, you, know, you could choose the basic, you could choose the um, a, a calculator. Uh, the original 128K models had a tape tester, but the plus two and plus threes didn't. And um, what else was there? Uh, I think that was pretty much it on the... Um, and then you, you had just an option to load load games. You'd actually just hit enter as soon as it booted up pretty much and it would it would load the games for you. So yeah, so I mean, I mentioned another small difference there actually in terms of the keyboard. Not just that the keyboard is a proper keyboard and it's better. Obviously it had a lot more keys. So there was a lot of keys on this model, on the original, you had to utilise symbol shift, um, caps lock, all those kind of things to... Um, to uh, get the extra functions out of those keys. Whereas on the um, 128K models, there was stuff that you didn't have to do, which was much better, you know, like the inverse video, 
um, you had an edit, you had graph, you had delete, you had break, you had all keys that you had to, had to be accessed through awkward key shifts on the 48K that you didn't have to on the, the 128K machines. Uh, another difference actually would also be to mention the back of the, the computers because on these we have a lot more ports. So there we have uh, your power supply, expansion IO, RS-232 MIDI, so you could actually hook up keyboards to these. Uh, keypad, uh, which is actually legacy from the 128K Plus model, which um, in Spain came with a separate numerical keypad, believe it or not. Um, but that actually mainly ended up getting used for the light guns. Um, they plugged into there. RGB, which is massive to have RGB, because that meant you didn't have to use the stupid um, RF socket anymore. And you actually have a sound port, so you can actually plug headphones into that socket. Um, there or speakers, if you wanted to have external speakers, which was quite cool as well. I'm just going to move my Plus 3 out of the way now for a moment, while we're looking at the the rest of the machine so yeah there's not a lot um to show you on the back just a serial number i'll just show you the difference between what you've got so on the um the plus the original models you had the expansion socket and you had mic and ear for headphones uh not headphones you had mic and ear for connecting up your tape recorder and your rf socket and that's all you had now another big difference in terms of the design was on this side you have a reset button, which believe it or not, there was no way to reset the original Spectrum apart from unplugging the power supply and plugging it back in again, which obviously produced a lot of wear and tear. And actually, uh, some people produce these third party switches where you plug your power supply into the switch and you plug the switch into your Spectrum. So then you had an on off switch on it, which was quite cool. But these actually have a reset button, not an on off switch. Um, you did still have to turn it off at the plug, but the reset button was great because obviously when you wanted to load another game, you didn't have to turn it off and on again. You could just press reset. And and clearly you've got your two joystick ports, one and two. And you notice there it says only use Sinclair SJS1 joysticks. And that's important as well because they chose to use their own joystick standard pretty much with, with these. Most people with Spectrums were used to what they call Kempston joysticks, which are more like the um, Atari standard. You could use any standard Atari joystick with the Kempston interface. But Sinclair themselves, prior to the Amstrad actually, obviously introduced the uh, Interface 2 add-on. The Interface 2 add-on had two joystick ports on it, which were Sinclair's own joysticks. And those ports actually made it so you could have two joysticks plugged in with Kempston, it was only one. And those joysticks corresponded to the number keys, which made them very, very easy to program, especially from basic. So, so you, yeah, eight, I think the first joystick was actually six, seven, eight, nine, zero, uh, and joystick two was one, two, three, four, five. And that was also good as well because on games where made before the one twenty eight K models came in, where they didn't have an option for Sinclair joystick they would quite often have an option for redefine keys. And that meant you could actually redefine the keys to those number keys and your joystick would work, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, otherwise, you would have had to just use, use your keyboard controls um, if there was no option for Sinclair or redefine keys. And some, some games, you know, only offered keyboard. And something that did make me laugh on this was, uh, this particular one that I picked up was, you can clearly see that the keyboard was used a lot by the QA and OP keys, which look pretty stained. Um, I'm guessing that maybe the person who owned this smoked a lot, uh, maybe had stained fingers. Pretty grim, but at the same time, it made me laugh because obviously QAOP was, was my keyboard layout of choice, QAOP space for fire, if I was using the keyboard. And I know the general consensus is with most people that that was their preferred um, layout to use when they were, when they were using keyboard controls. So yeah, there's not really anything else to mention. There's nothing on the other end at all. Uh, so there's no other sockets or ports or anything like that to mention. Well, so yeah, tape player has record, um, play, rewind, fast forward, eject and pause. Obviously record, some people might think what was it used for? Of course it was used if you when you were saving basic games onto tapes. 
So yes, you could get some blank tapes and, and save your stuff onto the cassette there. So let's talk about some games now. So these games, this six pack that came with it, were all. The funny thing was about this was it always I always found strange was that Amsterdam obviously bought the rights to these six games to include with the the plus two models. So we've got Oh Mummy and Disco Dan from Gem Software. I actually um, interviewed the guy who wrote both of them. Hello, Rosie, um, in Retro Gamer and did a making of Oh Mummy because it was a, a classic. Uh, that was a lot of fond memories. Oh, Mummy was probably the best of those games. In fact, it definitely was the best of those games. Um, back in the day, I really liked Alien Destroyer, but playing it in modern day, I found out it was quite crap. But yes, uh, they were all for old 48k games that they bought. Those two by Gem Software, Punchy by Mr. Micro, Crazy Golf by Mr. Micro, Treasure Island by Mr. Micro, and finally, Alien Destroyer by Kumar Computers. And... Uh, at least a couple of the games, I think Crazy Golf and Alien Destroyer, are both written in BASIC. So that's quite funny. If Crazy Golf isn't, it might not be actually, but it certainly looks like it is. Um, but Alien Destroyer definitely is written in BASIC. But the funny thing is that you had to load these in 48k mode. So they made a 1 to 8k machine. Oh, that's the other one I forgot from the menu, that you had an option for 48k mode for compatibility reasons. Um, because the ROM was different and so a lot of games wouldn't play in 128k mode and you had to switch to 48k mode for them to work. So all of these games had to be loaded from 48k mode, um, which was funny because you would have thought they would have included games that took advantage of the new computer. And even with this pack, the extra dicks and stuff, the only one here that takes any advantage of the fact you've got 128k is you've got a super file. 128k which is i think is a database program uh, that takes advantage of having the extra memory but not very exciting and it seems strange that that they didn't choose to include games you know that benefited from the extra music and the extra memory they it was something they did much later on um so the very late packs like the james bond packs had games that were 128k only but um yeah these ones didn't all 48k games uh none of them particularly great oh mummy Definitely the standout of that bunch. Disco Dan's all right. Punch is mm, all right. Crazy Golf was playable enough, but a bit slow and a bit um, simple. Uh, Treasure Island was annoyingly hard. I hated that. It was the one I'm, I disliked the most. Alien Destroyer there. Um, I really enjoyed back in the day. Blatant Clone of Galaxy. And playing it now, it's, it's absolutely terrible. Well, else you got? Ian Botham's Test Match there. Um was a decent enough cricket game for what I remember. I don't even remember playing the other two there. Um, so maybe I didn't. And I haven't stuck them on this one to, to try it out. Yeah, and uh, I'll just mention quickly, actually, the box um, shows, obviously, all that stuff. Well, it does show the games on the top of the box um, and down there. Um, and the joystick, which I will I'll show, actually show you in a minute because I've got it here. And uh, the back of the box is the same. There's no point in showing you all around the box because there's no differences. So let's go back again to what else was included um, aside from those games. That one keeps falling over, probably because I, I, I slagged it off, got upset there. So we, in the, we've got a, a user manual in the, in, in, the, um, in the box there. I really liked this user manual. I remember spending a lot of time going through it because uh, it has loads of really good examples of basic programming. 
in it, which I thought was, I thought was a really good, useful manual. Um, really good. So I was pleased that was still in the box. And of course, our legendary Sinclair SJ1 joystick. Now, I cannot describe how horrible these joysticks are. The very, very first thing we did after Christmas, when we got our Spectrum was, was go down to Argos, I think it was the day after Boxing Day, literally as soon as we possibly could, and buy a Cheetah 125 Plus. Because uh, this joystick is so bad. And uh, Cheetah 125 Plus was a really good joystick. I'd used it at my friend's house. And the thing I mentioned about the plugs was, you know, the joystick plugs is, what some of the joystick manufacturers started doing was, particularly Cheetah, was they put two plugs on the joysticks. So you had two different plugs, one for Sinclair and one for Kempston. So... Uh, no matter what type of spectrum you had, you could still use the joystick. It was great. Uh, so that's why I got that one in particular. But these joysticks are so bad. So first of all, um, it looks, obviously the design is pretty crap. Um, it looks really cheap and it is really cheap. I mean, watch this. I've got to show you this. There's nothing to make it centre. It just rattles around. There was one good thing that was for, though. Daily Thompson's Decathlon. Anyone who's played that game might remember that the whole thing involved you in waggling the joystick as fast as you could, um, or like on the track and field events and that. And a lot of people broke joysticks uh, with the with the um, the frantic waggling of her misses. Now, what I used to do was when I played that game was I actually used to plug in this joystick and just do this, and saved on wear and tear. You wouldn't break your joystick. But yeah, it's a terrible, terrible joystick because we've only got one fire button, which is on the top. It's really unresponsive and rubbish. You really had to press it hard to get anything out of it. And rubber suction cups on the bottom to stick it to your desk, which was the best thing about it, really. Uh, it was nice that it matched the design of the, the Spectrum, but oh my God, I think it's easily the worst joystick I've ever used. Um, I can't think of a joystick that's worth it. I did really, really hate the Conic Speaking joysticks. So I know a lot of people liked those, but I I absolutely detested those. But yes, that is the awful Sinclair SJ1. Let's, 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 let's get rid of that. Um, So in terms of whether this is the, the Spectrum to get or not, one of my um, patrons actually um, sent me some messages recently on um, my Patreon, uh, you know, asking me some advice on Spectrums because they're in America and uh, they wanted to know uh, what model is the best one to get and uh, how can they use it in the US and how it'll work and stuff. And we had a good back and forth conversation and uh, I hope I helped them a lot with them. Um, with that decision about whether to get a Spectrum and which one was right for them. And uh, it's a question you see a lot of people asking and uh, there is no really clear answer, I don't think, to that. But a lot of people will tell you that this one is actually the best one to get. And I'll tell you why. Now, I really like the Plus 3 because it has the disk drive, um, which I think is a big bonus. And it also has um, really good RGB output on the, the Plus 3 as well. But the problem with the Plus 3 is they are really, really, really expensive. Then you have the Toast Rack, which a lot of people would say is the best Spectrum because it has the best compatibility, because it has a slightly different ROM to the Amstrad machines. And it actually has better compatibility with 48K games than the Plus 2 does. And actually the Plus 2A and the Plus 3 have even worse compatibility because the ROM was changed again which caused more compatibility problems. So the 128K Plus, or the, or the Toast Rack, as many people call it, is the most compatible with 48K games if you want a 128K Spectrum. I think you do. I don't see any reason for buying a 48K Spectrum 
apart from to look at because the aesthetics let's face it of the rubber key it's a beautiful looking computer but in terms of using it i would never use it as my as, as a regular spectrum for many reasons uh not least that horrible internal speaker and the awful keyboard but so the one trick k plus toast rack are even more expensive than plus threes they go for the most money because they were only produced for about one year um so there wasn't that many of them made and uh yeah that that means that the price of them is extortionate uh really bad especially if you want a nice boxed one whereas this is probably the cheapest model to buy this and the, the plus 2a probably i think probably go for about the same price uh i'm not 100 percent research that but i would have thought there's a big difference but obviously this one the gray plus 2 has better compatibility with 48k software than the plus 2a does so that's why this will be better than the plus 2a i must mention well actually quickly that the plus 2a i said it looks the same but it's black it doesn't have an a on the on the front it will just say zx spectrum plus 2 the same as this does uh they call it the a because that's that's the, the kind of the rom revision um but in terms of the the naming on the box and the, the computer it didn't have an a on it at all and there was a plus 2b as well actually but let's not confuse matters so the Grey Plus 2 has the best has the best compatibility of the Amstrad produced Spectrums. It's probably the cheapest one to pick up. Um, they're very, very common. Uh, they sold really, really well. So they're not hard to find. And they were generally pretty reliable. The only thing you'll probably find is, or you might find is, uh, especially if you pick up one that's been stuck in a loft for ages is, for example, this one, the tape drive does no longer work. And the reason is, is because the band that drives it is brittle and it's 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 snapped. But you can quite easily buy new bands and they are quite easy to fit. So it isn't too difficult to um, get the cassette drives working again. You also have a little screw here as well, the azimuth screw, to, um, which you sometimes have to twist a bit to, to get it to read the tapes uh, properly. But that's that's easy to do. And another actually thing that's, that's better with the Plus 2 is, is the Plus 3... And the plus do I have absolutely enormous power packs. This one doesn't has a more regular um, power pack, which is more like the ones that came with the original Spectrums. Doesn't take up anywhere near as much room as the the plus three and plus two A power packs. Also, if you need to replace the power pack, it's easy to find a replacement for these, and not so easy to find a replacement power pack for the plus two A and plus three. So that's it, really. Um, if you want to get a Spectrum and you don't want to spend too much money, then the Plus 2 is the one to get. And uh, they're easy to find. Have a look at eBay. And that's it, really. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my look at the ZX Spectrum Plus 2. And uh, I've been the lad, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.